The RSV data format, where RSV stands for rows of string values, is a simple binary alternative to CSV. An RSV document represents an array of arrays of nullable string values, also called a checked array. Its main purpose is to store tabular data, but because it's a checked array, it's not limited to that. So rows can contain the same number of values, but don't have to. Here's an example of tabular data. We have four columns, a header row, and three data rows. There is one H value missing, so we have a null value. Expressed as a JSON document, our example would look like this. We can see the array of arrays, our string values, and a null value. Now let's have a look at an example of non-tabular data. Here we have a small 2D vector graphics format that describes a list of four points and a list of two triangles indexing the previously defined points. In this example we can clearly see that the number of values per row can vary. Again as JSON document, the example would look like this. Notice numbers are also represented as strings, because RSV does not differentiate between different data types like boolean or numbers, but instead has only string or null values. The interpretation of these values is up to the program, or depends on the custom data format which was built upon RSV. Not having special data types makes the format both simple and universal, because you can represent every data type as string without worrying about precision or aspects like endianness. It also makes writing code to read and write RSV documents really easy. Now that we have an idea about the type of data we can represent with RSV, let's have a look at how an RSV document is actually encoded. A first difference to CSV is that RSV is a binary format and not a textual format like CSV which means an RSV file is not meant to be opened with a text editor. Doing so will result in the display of weird characters and thus is not recommended. This is a typical property of binary formats, which sacrifice this sort of readability in order to offer other benefits like better reading and writing performance or not having you to write a complex parser. In case of RSV, it has a nice advantage, which we will now have a look at. In order for a textual data format like CSV or TSV, to indicate where one value ends and another value begins, a delimiter character must be defined. In case of CSV, this might be a comma or a semicolon, or in case of TSV, a simple tab character. Another delimiter is also needed to indicate the end of one row and the beginning of the following row. In case of CSV or TSV, this might be a single line break character like a line feed or a combination using the carriage return character. This works perfectly well, as long as the values themselves don't contain these delimiters. But this is kind of fragile, because what happens when they do contain these delimiters? This is referred to as delimiter collision. And one solution for it is to use some sort of escape sequences, so that you can differentiate those cases. For CSV, a common approach is to put values containing commas or line breaks inside of double quotes. But then again, the double quote character itself becomes a delimiter and you must handle the case when a value contains it. This all comes with a processing cost and raises the question if we could avoid delimiter collision at all. And yes, with a binary format we can. With a binary format we can simply write the length of a string value before the actual data. But that approach might significantly increase the size of the resulting file if a fixed width encoding is used for the length values, or makes the format more complicated when you need to think about encoding the length values with a variable width encoding scheme to only use a minimal number of bytes. You also need to write a value that indicates how many values a row contains or how many bytes it will take. But this approach might limit the flexibility of appending values to an existing file. So that's why RSV does not follow this approach, but instead uses special bytes to indicate the end of a value or the end of a row. These terminating bytes are possible because RSV strings are Unicode strings and are encoded using UTF-8. With the UTF-8 encoding and its specific byte pattern, there is a range of bytes that will never be produced by the encoding scheme. These bytes, which are invalid UTF-8 bytes, invalid because they should be rejected by a UTF-8 decoder, can be used in a binary format to convey special meaning. RSV uses three of these special bytes, which are the bytes 253, 254 and 255. Byte 255 is used to terminate a value, byte 254 signals a null value 
and byte 253 is used to terminate a row. These three bytes will never collide with any byte value of a UTF-8 encoded string value, so we completely get rid of the limiter collision and don't have to check our string values for special characters and don't need to resort to any kind of escape sequences. So we've learned that two bytes are terminating bytes. This aspect of RSV is also a big difference to CSV or comma separated values, where like the name already tells us, values are separated by a delimiter instead of being terminated by. Having every row of an RSV file being terminated by our special byte has the nice advantage that RSV files can simply be concatenated. It also makes the special case of an empty RSV file without any rows possible. Now that we know the basics of the RSV encoding, let's have a look at a simple example. Here we have a single row containing two strings, first a string hello and then a second string simply containing a world emoji. The encoding process would look like this. First we write the UTF-8 bytes of the hello string. All five characters are ASCII characters, so there's nothing special here. We terminate the value with byte 255 and go on to the next string. The world emoji is a Unicode supplementary character that requires four bytes when encoded using UTF-8. Again we terminate the value with byte 255. And because we've reached the end of the row, we terminate it using our special byte 253. And this is our resulting byte sequence for our simple RS3 document. Now let's add two other rows to our document, the first being empty and the second containing a null value and an empty string value. The empty row would simply add another byte 253 to our byte sequence and the last row would encode like this. For the null value, we add special byte 254 and terminate it with byte 255. The empty string value is simply our value terminating byte 255. Finally, we terminate the row with byte 253. And that's basically it. Really simple and straightforward and easy to implement both for writing and reading. A simple RSV encoder can be written in Python with only 9 lines of code and be used like this which will give us exactly our example file, which we encoded previously by hand. Decoding then simply is a matter of iterating over the encoded bytes and detecting the special terminator bytes as well as the special null value byte. So loading an RSV file simply becomes this. If you want to try out RSV, then you can check out my RSV challenge repository, where I already ported the basic encoding and decoding functions as well as saving and loading functions to over 30 different programming languages. I've got almost the entire top 20 of the Tyobi index covered, as well as most of the programming languages where you can actually find a job for. You can even find an implementation for Fortran or COBOL in the repository. And if you think there's an important programming language missing, which is not too esoteric, you can simply post a wish in the comment section. Concerning use cases, you can use RSV as an alternative to CSV or TSV. You can also use it as a binary alternative to streaming oriented formats like JSON lines, where you could put multiple textual documents like JSON, YAML or XML documents into a single file. A simple configuration file would also be a use case. And that's it. I hope you liked the format and we will see us in the next video. Bye!